Now, the topic of today's video is going to be Oh, bloody ambulance. One sec. Okay, here we go. So, topic of today's video, sorry about that, uh, is going to be stainless steel Dutch oven versus a more, let's say, a more traditional enameled cast iron Dutch oven, right? So, on my left, I have a 24 centimeter Demeter Atlantis 5.2 liter stainless steel Dutch oven or casserole. And on the right is a 28 centimeter Le Creuset uh, enameled cast iron, uh, which uh, many of you will be familiar with. So first of all, what is uh, a stainless steel Dutch oven? Well, it's basically a stainless steel pan or pot in this form factor, in this shape, um, between let's say four liters to eight liters in volume. Okay, there's no dictionary definition. So if it's very small, it's normally called a saucepan. If it's tall like this, uh, it's normally called a stock pot or a soup pot. Um, but if it's shaped something like this, uh, again, volume, let's say four to eight liters, and the pan is wider than it is tall, uh, it can be referred to as a stainless steel Dutch oven or casserole. Okay. This video is going to be somewhat biased, I guess, because I'm going to talk about why the stainless steel Dutch oven um, works better in my personal situation, okay? And of course, you could use the same reasoning to decide if a stainless steel Dutch oven is right for you, or if a more traditional cast iron or enameled cast iron Dutch oven is the right choice for you. So the biggest advantage um, for me is that the stainless steel Dutch oven, this Atlantis, works better on my uh, flat top or electric hob. Okay, and um, and the biggest reason within that is that because of the bottom, uh, which is a two millimeter layer of copper in combination with three layers of aluminium alloy, a 3.8 millimeter thick bottom overall. The heat distribution uh, on the uh, Atlantis is much better, much, much better in fact, than uh, the Le Creuset. So let's uh, have a look at that right now. Now, this is the results from the test of the heat distribution and that's again done on a slightly undersized flat top electric flat top firstly i gotta say i never expected the liquor say to perform to the standards of the demela atlantis with a copper and the aluminium bottom okay and that's just due to the nature uh, of the material okay cast iron you can never expect it to distribute heat as evenly as aluminium or copper or a combination of the two so which is no surprise here that uh, the demeter as uh, per my previous test performed very impressively uh, the temperature difference between the center and the edge is, is, is basically negligible okay we were talking about less than 10 degrees and um, and around the edge uh, it was basically at the same temperature Okay, and this is even more impressive because uh, the 24 centimeter bottom is actually about two and a half to three centimeters larger than my hob. Okay, so even though I'm using it on an undersized hob, um, the temperature distribution is still so good. Right. And now the Le Creuset. Uh, well, it, ha it actually performed better than a couple of other cast iron pieces I have, right? I have a couple of other cast iron pieces that show difference of well over 100 degrees between the uh, center and the edge. Um, so in that sense, the Le Creuset is not doing too bad. Um, but as you can see, there is quite a significant difference um, between the Le Creuset and the Atlantis. Uh, the center, actually I forgot to put a number there, but the center by the end of the test was around 200 degrees, okay? Uh, so the best that I could do is have one corner, the upper corner, at 180, 
and um, and the other three corners uh, well um, significantly different so it's a bit over the place okay now this is a graph of the uh, center temperature of both pans the Atlantis and the Le Creuset versus time now what we can conclude here is that the Atlantis uh, contrary to what many people may think, actually cooks slower than the cast iron Le Creuset. And the difference is approximately 30 seconds. So in other words, it takes the Atlantis 30 seconds longer to reach the same temperature in the center as the Le Creuset. And this means that scientifically, the Atlantis has more thermal mass on the bottom of the pan compared to the Le Creuset. Yeah, so it is able to store more heat and this is beneficial when it comes to searing. Now, people think in general that a cast iron is always going to be store, going to be able to store more heat, and that's true when you consider the whole pan. But here, you got to think about if you are searing meat, for example, which part of the pan is going to be actually doing the work, and that is the bottom of the pan, not the side of the pan. Okay. So what we can say here is that the Atlantis, um, and also uh, as I've seen in actual practice, actually in theory will do a better job at searing uh, compared to the Le Creuset. Okay, so we've spoken about uh, the heat distribution. Uh, there are a couple of other, let's say, more general um, advantages um, for the stainless steel Dutch oven that uh, not only applies to me, but I guess it would apply to a lot of other people as well. Uh, the first uh, advantage is that it is lighter and easier to handle. Okay, so this whole vessel is three, uh, just under three kilograms, while this vessel is uh, 6.7 kilograms. Okay, uh, you notice that uh, they are not the same diameters. Okay, so with the Meta, they do make a 28 uh, centimeter version of this which is bigger obviously and uh, that would be around I guess I can't remember exactly about 3.5 kilograms so uh, which is um, you know still a lot lighter than the Le Creuset and um, but for the purpose of this comparison this is actually better because the bottom diameter is comparable to this so this bottom diameter of 24 millimeters is actually slightly bigger than this bottom diameter of about 22 because the Le Creuset is tapered like this. Right. Now, the second advantage is that, a potential advantage, is that um, a stainless steel casserole like this, a high quality one, okay, so that there's the caveat, you got to get a high quality one, um, it could potentially last longer than an enameled cast iron, okay. So while the, a good quality enamel cast iron, like the Le Creuset, um, you can't expect it to be, let's say, a lifetime pan or a multi-generation pan. Um, I've seen many reports of um, you know, cheaper manufacturers, cheaper products, or in fact, even the Le Creuset, uh, having their enamels crack or chip. Um, of course, some of it may be due to you know, the person not using it properly. But what I'm trying to say here is that on an enameled cast iron piece, there is or there are things that can be damaged and there are things that can potentially break. While on a stainless steel casserole, um, there are less things that can potentially break. Okay. And one last thing, one last disadvantage or advantage for the stainless steel is that well, and this is interesting because most people don't think about this un until after they buy it and then they realize, oh, this is a slight problem. Is that um, the stainless steel, if you have a glass top, will sit better on a glass top. While the enameled cast iron surface, because it's also enameled on the bottom, the enameled cast iron surface, when you put it onto a glass top or a flat top, it can be very, very slippery. Okay, so let's have a look at that now. Okay, see how easily that slides around? I'm just giving it a little tap. All right, and when you're working with a spatula with one hand maybe like this, it's very hard to keep it right in the center and that can really get quite annoying. Now the Atlantis stainless bottom, uh, well, it's still a bit slippery, 
but it doesn't seem to move as much as the um, enamel surface. Now in this section, I'm going to talk about some of the, I guess you could call counter arguments um, to why a cast iron Dutch oven is normally considered, considered the best way to go in terms of slow cooking or cooking something low and slow. Okay. Firstly, a lot of these recipes, um, if you make braised chicken or braised beef, beef stew, beef bourguignon, for example, you are going to start off on the uh, stove and then you're going to spend the next two, three hours cooking it in the oven. Okay. So in the oven, because the surrounding is going to be at whatever temperature you set the oven to, okay, it really doesn't matter how much thermal mass the pan has. Okay. And again, with a lot of these recipes, it starts off with braid, uh, searing, rather searing the meat on the, uh, on the stove. And as we've seen in the temperature distribution test, uh, a stainless steel casserole like this can, could potentially have more thermal mass on the bottom um, compared to the cast iron. Okay? Because when you're searing, you're using the bottom of the pan, not the whole body of the pan. And that means you're going to get a better sear. Uh, actually in the stainless steel rather than uh, in the cast iron. Now secondly, for a lot of these uh, recipes um, you are cooking with wet ingredients and sometimes you know it's, it, it's mostly liquid and in that case the added thermal mass of the cast iron is really going to make a negligible difference in terms of the heat retention and the reason for that okay it's a little bit scientific i'm not going to get into it too much too much uh, i've already spoken about it in my previous video i'll uh, put a link down below and that is the amount of heat the liquid or the water can store is is much much bigger than the amount of additional heat the added um, mass of the pan can store if that makes sense all right so that additional thermal mass from the pan itself is not going to make a, a, a significant or noticeable difference it's like uh, think about it like this you have a pot of water you have a five liter volume of water at 90 degrees okay and you are pouring in a small cup of water that's at 100 degrees so overall the you know overall the temperature of the water combined will rise but is that difference actually detectable okay well it is detectable if you have a thermometer that has enough resolution but for practical purposes you're not going to notice a difference so that's the kind of analogy uh, that applies when it comes to um, cast iron versus or if any other pot uh, when it comes to cooking with most mostly liquid ingredients okay so i want to wrap up this video by talking about what you should look for if you want to go in the direction of a stainless dutch oven now on a gas cooktop i think both cladded and disc bottom pans are going to work well uh, although I still have to say the disc bottom pan, provided that it has a thick disc bottom, uh, is still going to give you better heat retention and could potentially be better for steering. Now, if you've got an induction or any electric flat top, then I would tend to lean towards uh, the direction of disc bottom pans. Uh, and that's only because a thick aluminum bottom uh, or, co or with copper is going to give you that um, slightly better uh, heat distribution across the bottom of the pan. Now, for both in both cases, obviously go for oven safe material. Um, if your budget allows, copper will be good, but it, it's it, it, it doesn't give you that much value for the money. Okay, so that's definitely not a necessity. Okay, and just avoid any gimmicky features. Um, you know the the idea is always keeping it simple that's always the best um the best solution and you know, that will also give you the best longevity uh some quick recommendations uh, again you know what you can buy that depends 
on your region, of course, um, you know, there are some brands like All Clad that are not so accessible in Europe. Um, and also Demela, I do understand that it could be expensive in the US. Uh, so these are just the pens that I've had some experience with, right? So out of these four, uh, well, out of the first three, uh, the Apollo is really a you know, fantastic value for money. Okay, that's um, you can't be the Apollo you know, for you know, for what you get at that price point. Uh, and the Apollo compared to the Atlantis, both disc bottom pens, it actually cooks a bit um, slower, uh, which could be a benefit. Uh, but the Apollo has, hasn't got copper, it has a seven layer aluminum disc. Okay, the industry is a five, uh, five ply cookware. Okay, so that's kind of the standard five ply construction, and there is no 28 centimeter model for the industry. Now the last one, Fistler. Now this is really a fantastic piece of kit. Uh, also, again for the price, um, I have some experience with the Fistler 28 centimeter rondeau. Uh, that gave me the best searing out of any pan that I've ever had, and this will cook even slower than the Apollo. So out of the four that you see here, the Fistler has the thickest um, aluminium bottom, and it is also the slowest. Cooking now, whether you want that or you don't want that, that's uh, that's up to you. Um, but the Fister again, fantastic um, value proposition for for the money. Okay, all right. So I think that uh, brings me to the end of the video. Uh, again, uh, this I understand is this video has been biased towards the aluminium. Uh, sorry, towards the stainless steel Dutch oven, but of course it's just what works better for me in my personal kitchen. All right. So I'll see you in the next video.